Take your Bibles this morning. Let's go over to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Then hold your fingers there, and then turn over to Psalms 37, 3 through 6. We'll begin reading in uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. I know there's a humorous slide there, bless too much. Sometimes we want more and more and more and more, and it's not always good for us. You know, as we've been doing a series and beginning a series, sermons from the farm, you learn a lot from the animals you deal with. And one of that is the animals are looking to you for direction. You are the adult in the situation. You know what's best for them. One thing that you'll know about horses is certain breeds are very prone to founder. And one of the breeds that we have is very prone to founder. So we have to be very careful and limit their protein, limit their sugar, limit that, or it could cost them their life and the expense that it entails there. But they don't know any better. They think, oh, we have spring grass. I want to eat the whole thing. Well, no, there's a problem. Oh, that grain bin is right outside my uh, tack room. It's, it's there for a reason. It's my name all over it. No, that's why they get portion. Through life, God sets boundaries for us as Christians. And we pray many times, Lord, I, I you know, meet our needs, but I really need this. But do we need that? If we were blessed with everything we asked for, would we be here today? You think about this. In 17, almost 18 years of ministry here at Community, a lot of people look at me and say, Pastor, if God blesses me here, this is what I'm going to do. I have learned, I wish people wouldn't say that, because generally 99.99% .99 of the time, it never happens. Don't tell me. If God blesses you, just do something. Don't say you're going to do something and not do it at all because we've made a vow and we've not kept it. But this is the thing. God allows it. God hears our thoughts. God hears our heart. And so sometimes he allows it just to see if you're going to do it. And you know, a lot of times I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, it, no, just hold on. God blesses us sometimes to test us. And this is where in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. But here's a verse that doesn't get read a lot. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in your own eyes. You know, a horse thinks he's pretty smart. He's 1,200 pounds of muscles and fat. And he can really do a lot of damage because he thinks he's pretty smart. You know, as a rider, I see a lot more than the horse does. I have one brain, not two, that think independently. When my horse would always think, that, hey, I'm going to get rid of my rider. I'm going to run toward the fence, and I'm going to go through the fence, and it's going to hurt the rider. It's never hurt me, but it sure has hurt him. But he thinks he knows best that, that fence is going to get. Sometimes those fences don't give. But we realize, as a rider, I know hurting, hitting that fence is going to hurt him, period. It's going to get him a cut, get it, get her a cut. It's going to cause them to fall. So many things. I know better, but in his mind, I'm the boss. And that's why so many ways, just like two of my horses love to eat, but we had to limit them because we knew what's best for them. Too many treats is not always good, amen, for all of us. One chocolate chip cookie after dinner, not five. <laughs> and that's my thing is like, no, nope, don't. Nope. When my mother was moving, one of my most special possessions, may not be anybody else, was an elephant cookie jar. I remember from the time I was a child. He had a sailor's hat on. He was just the cutest little elephant you ever see. 
But mom's thing was one cookie. It's amazing how when you're smaller, two comes out when you're reaching for one. It's just like, or you kind of break one in half and, you know, get a bigger half of another one. And so, you know, basically you're getting two cookies, but you just broke off a couple half, you know, quarters actually. And so you have a cookie and a half instead of a cookie, you know, but the mom knows better. Why? Too much sugar down the road is going to affect you. Today, look, many of us have it or know someone that has diabetes. And it's not a fun disease. But it's because when we were younger, we didn't have the moderation. And this is where God knows best. And he blesses us not too much, but just right. Proverbs is almost mirrored in Psalms 37. Let's read Psalm 37, please. Verses 3 through 5. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so thou wilt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. What a blessing. Trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. What a promise. You will be fed. But he says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. This is an extra special blessing. If you continue doing what God wants, he will meet those little greeds that we might have and give you exactly. Yesterday, everywhere we go, we are blessed to be a blessing. And you know, we sometimes forget how blessed we are in 2022. Last three days, it's been an immersion for me to go back to Hall in 1944. Nothing, we couldn't even have our cell phones on. Nothing, electricity, nothing. We had to eat everything. And of course, we all know what the temperature was the last few nights. And all we have is what we took in. And you know, the civilians or the U.S. troops or the occupation troops, we had to be. Well, as we were rounding up some partisans, one of our guys dropped a very expensive weapon. Couldn't find it. And he got all mad. And I thought, God, I need to show you real. Would you do that for me? And we, all of us, were scouring the woods with all the leaves. It just rained. And we cannot find a black weapon that's this big. And I said, Lord, would you please help this young soldier find what he needs? And he had us all going in this direction. And I bowed my head. And a guy came up behind me. What you doing? I said, I'm praying. He goes, yeah, okay. And all of a sudden, I found it. And I looked up and I said, he just walks away. It was nowhere where he thought. And he was walking through a pile of trees and he stumbled on a stump and there it was sitting. Right beside the stump in the leaves. And he goes, wow, I didn't think I was over here. But he was giving up in disgust and walking back to camp in the direction he didn't go. And that afternoon, another guy came to me and says, do you know where I threw this? course he was trying to hit me with a grenade and didn't go off so thank goodness and but right where he threw it was a brush pile to be burnt and the gray grenade was gray and it was all birch we looked and we looked and it wasn't there and I said God would you do it a second time and we spent 20 minutes and I said I have to go pack I said I got to get back and I bowed my head said Lord would you please help us find? And as I'm walking away, I step on something. And what do you know? It wasn't in the bush at all. It was in another path. It had hit the bush and bounced. And there it was. I said, here you go. He goes, you don't know how much expensive these things are. And I thought, thank you, Lord. I said, well, I just prayed. He says, well, that was quick. You know, testimony everywhere you go. This is the thing. 
God gives you desire. My heart is to be a blessing to the men I'm with, to show them that God is real and God does answer prayer. Just, yeah, for toys. Let's put it that way. That's all they are, grown men toys. But they mean something to those men. They invest it in those toys so that they can relieve history. And God is real. And as I went back to camp and I said, well, that's number two. They said, what, Padre? I said, two prayers answered. And they go like, little by little, dropping that seed into the ground. They're going to realize that, hey, prayers get answered for big things like health, amen, and little things like toys or children passing test, doing this, doing that, finding lost keys. You know how many times I've prayed and found lost keys and my wife, you know, 30 years later, if you put them in the same place twice, you'd find them every time. <laughs> but I'm forever coming in, just laying it down somewhere, grabbing this. And then as I get older, my memory gets better. Amen, guys. <laughs> Where did I put it? I don't know what we do without our wives. We've been blessed too much sometimes where we forget where the blessings come from and we become carnal in our thinking. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of this word, the challenge from the farm about bless too much, too many treats. It's not always good for us. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers, making us wait for our prayers or declining our prayers because you know what's really good for us. Thank you, Lord, for those prayers that you do answer. We love to brag on you and show you to the world how great of God you are, even in the little things. Thank you for the desires of our heart. Thank you for our daily needs. Thank you for our health and the ability to be with our family this morning. Thank you for all you bless us with. Use this message to challenge us to rethink how we think of blessings. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen. You know, I can't help but think of the song my mom sang, count your many blessings, name them one by one. As they were going from one camp to another prison of war camp as a child, she remembers that song being sung, count your many blessings, name them one by one. She had just had to give up everything she had as a child and take two items. Think about that. What would you choose if you were told to leave your house today and you were marched to a concentration camp? What two things would you take? As a nine-year-old girl, she chose what every little girl does, her doll, and something special. Everything else is gone. What would we choose as adults? If you say your teddy bear or doll, I'm going to come feel your temperature. What would you take? A Bible? A photograph? Something special? What would you? I was thinking about that when they called in the middle of the night for us to go out on patrol. We were sitting in a hole and I could, could not even see it. And I was thinking about the message this morning. What would I take? What is more special than any other blessing God had given me? Tangible, but that's good. But you think about this. If I had to take two things, one would definitely be a Bible. But what, what is so special? What was the other things? You know, I, I couldn't think of a second thing. I, I, there's too many things I like, but what, the first thing was, I would like something to read. I'd like my Bible. Because it's a book that never gets old. It's a book that brings me courage. It's a book that brings me comfort. It's a book that admonished my soul. Bless too much. Sometimes we have so much. My wife and I have been going through things, condensing down, just things we should have done 20 years ago, but we just keep dragging stuff. And We've got boxes I packed when I moved to Canada and stuff that I've had forever. I was looking at stuff that I've had from Chilliwack. I'm like, why did mom save this? <laughs> why, 
Why have I been carting around this for 30 years of my life? What, you know, what was the purpose of this? I don't need to know what grade school I, score I had in second grade. You know, I don't need my curriculum and all that stuff. I, what really do I need? All I care about is I'm, I've passed that and I don't want to go back to school, amen? But blessed. It's time to condense. But you know what the hardest thing is? Getting rid of stuff that we really don't need. But I might, listen, I haven't opened the box in almost 20 years. <laughs> I forgot what was in those boxes. It was like Christmas. Oh, you remember that? Yeah, what taste I had. (laughs) Oh, things have changed. But as you look at life, Patchy was a special horse to me. I bought him up in Zephyr. And when I saw him, he was rather large. (laughs) He needed to go on a weight loss program 301, not 101. He was 301. He was big. And I know Pertrons get that way, but he was overly because the owner was scared of him. So she just fed him everything again, hoping that it would make, huh? It made it worse. And so he got to the point where I want it because I'm big and I'm going to look mean at you and I'm going to flatten my ears and you're going to give it to me. Well, she said, would you like to ride him? Oh yes. I want to ride him before he gets on that horse. I want to ride him. I got on there and I turn the reins this way and he goes that way. And I said, oh, no, you don't. And he's like, oh, who's on my back? (laughs) You know, and he started doing all these weird things. I'm like, no, you are doing what I'm saying to do. You are not the boss. I'm the boss. And, you know, when food time came, Patchy was always last. He, although older, had to be taught patience is a virtue, not a demand. And hence, last week you heard about Felicia taking the fly because he thought he should be in the barn first to eat even though he didn't need to eat. He could live off the fat of the land for about three years. But he was blessed too much, too many treats. And he'd become to demand it. He'd become rude because he had gotten his way so long. But as Dr. Mako said, he needs to cut back. It was affecting his asthma. It was affecting so many things because of the pressure on his lungs. So every week we would put that tape around his girth. Whoop, got to go down more. You should be around this. But he didn't like it. We had to give him shots. We had to give him different things because the weight was affecting what he did. Blessed. Just because we think we need it doesn't mean we do. We all love to spoil ourselves, our spouses, our children, our friends, and yes, our animals. You just have to walk through any subdivision and we can see there's way too many animals overweight. I can just look at myself and see sometimes I haven't denied myself like I should. You know, it's, I've had to really soul search myself a lot of things this week studying. Because even myself and the journey that I'm on, and it came from encouraging from my cousin who said, we were talking about weight, and I said, I don't like, he said, well, it's up to you to change it. Yeah, but this, you know, we can offer excuses. But the thing is, do we do it? And so he challenged me, so I began it. And it's been a wonderful journey. I was going to wear a gray suit this morning, but unfortunately my suspenders and my belt could not hold it up. But that's a good thing. Because I get to sell that one and buy another one. You know, that actually fits. And it'll look like Bozo the Clown. But I had had a choice what to do. You know what was happening? It was affecting my heart. All the tests and everything like that. As I'm losing weight, I'm not having all the heart problems. The reason is my heart was too much pressured with all that's going on and the weight. it's, I have to be mindful of my health. Yes. I love my pastas. I love my cookies. I love my toasts in the morning. I love all these things, but I have to be wise and moderate. And the Lord gives us tools. The Lord gives us people. The Lord brought my cousin in the way. And you know, he challenged me. And now we're challenging each other. He's lost more weight than I have. 
But it's amazing. Doing nothing different is just counting the calories. How much do I really need to live on? But this is where God gives us the word of God to say, how much do we really need to live on? Well, I got to have that. Do we need it? Or do we want it? It's tough to say no. You know, Patchy was a wonderful horse. He was definitely my horse. And he knew he was my horse. He was the biggest baby. And he knew how to look at you, those big brown eyes, and just kind of drop his head and look at you like, I'm withering. I'm skinny. I'm starving. Can you hear my stomach gurgling? I really need this food. Dad, would you give it to me? You know, sometimes, and I'd bring him an apple. I brought him some carrots sometimes, but he really wasn't a fan of carrots. He liked the apples. Now, the other horses loved carrots, but he was not a carrot person. But he absolutely loved pears. And we, would, we made the mistake of putting them out near our orchard pasture. And everybody's eating grass. And here's Patchy. All the pears on the all lower levels, gone. And of course, Lori loves pears. And never let Patchy out. So we ended up having to put an electric fence around all the fruit. Because he would, instead of eating grass, he would be eating all the fruit. <laughs> And then he'd be over there going like, oh, I don't feel so good. You know, it's like, and he's got it all drooling down his, his muzzle. Just, he's all sticky from the juice. We call him the apple juicer. Because, I mean, he, he does, I was like, enough sweets. You've had enough. But he would sit there by that electric fence and stretch that neck as far as he get. And he'd be trying to get that fruit. And I was like, so we kept having to move it back, move it back. Because he would do his best to reach. And if he could get a hold of the branch, he would literally pull that tree and shake it until he got something bouncing off his way. The horse was smart. He loved his treats, but he was too smart for his own good. We're often incapable, like Patchy, of knowing which things will truly make us happy. Because there was one time he ate too much. We had to call Dr. Macko. And we had to really watch him because we were afraid that he had got foundered. You know, that was a scare. We walked him around the circles, walked around. We wouldn't, he was laying down. We're like, come on, get up. And trying to get a fat horse up. That's like trying to get me out of bed at 530 in the morning to go on a forced march this morning. <laughs> I'm cold and I don't have my coffee and I'm cranky. <laughs> but you know, I knew what was best. And after that, I made a decision. My family made a decision. No. And he started losing weight. And guess what? With the weight, the shots went away. The wheezing went away. The coughing went away. A lot of things were better. Turn with me to Hebrews 13, verse 5. Sometimes God sends us things. If God were to grant us our every wish more than likely he would end up doing us more harm than good. One of the greatest things we have to realize in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with what things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Mrs. Estelle hit it right on the head. We need Jesus. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. We sometimes think we have to have these things, but like 20 years later, I'm going through boxes of stuff that we had to have years ago that we don't use anymore. When Lori's granddad passed away, he had to have everything advertised on TV and the shopping channel said they had to have. We cleaned out drawers I mean, drawers of every little gadget that came on the television that was never out of his box. Like, why did you need this clapper? You didn't use it anyway. Why did you need this? Why did you need that? Granted, good grief. Look at the money you spent. You never, he had to buy a computer. And the amount of money he spent on a computer and granddad, this is now, now go back. This is in the nineties and two, early 2000s. Computers were expensive. And if you didn't have the patience for computers, Brother Abe, amen, a lot of older people, when the computer first came out, granddad was one of them, he didn't know how to operate it. 
this stupid thing's not working. He is not going to make it go any faster, Granddad. You know, he would he call me up and say something, and I was like, "We's not doing." It. I was like, "The operator inputs the command. He must not be doing something. It's not the computer's fault. It's not you probably did." Well, I just been hitting this key. Well, normally when you hit something too much, it breaks. <laughs> but he thought he had to have this computer. Paid seven hundred something dollars for it to have this computer, and it sat there. Because after a week, he got frustrated because he didn't do what he wanted to do. His house was full of things, ladies and gentlemen, that he had to have and didn't need. And this is where blessed too much can be a curse. Because it was a bad thing for my family and I because we had to go through all of that stuff after he passed and sorted out what was Basically, something, what, what are we keeping? And what do we have no use for? Think about that. What do we have clutter in our life? What are things in our life where we've been blessed, which we really don't need? God does so many things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. My first year in Bible school, I met a young lady that I thought was going to be the future Mrs. Horton. As a typical young adult, immature on life's decisions. I'd asked her to marry me and she said yes. And you know, that was my heart's desire. That's who I thought I needed. But I'm so glad God has other plans. Because I wouldn't be married to my wife this January 30 years. Life would be completely different. Would I be here? Probably not. Would my kids be here? Absolutely not. Would I be even together? Probably not. Because her family had a very bad track record of divorce. Because they were all mama's girls. I didn't see that. But when they came to visit my dad in Chilliwack and my parents, he pulled me aside and told me some things I didn't really want to hear. He said, be careful. The first two sisters are divorced. She's the third. Second of all, all sisters live within five miles of mom. There's going to be a problem. And notice, dad never says anything. It's always mom that makes the rules. Are you ready to live with this? You're marrying the family just as much as you're marrying her. But I was a 20-year-old. What? Man, I didn't need anything. I was, I was a smart man. But God had other plans. And truly, when I mentioned I'd like to come back home, that was the dividing line. No man is going to take my children out of Tennessee. And the mom broke it up. But you know, a month and a half later, there was a lady that came from Georgia all the way to Chilliwack and made me go hubba bubba wow. <laughs> I like this girl that just walked in my life. But see, God had a plan. And you know, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be a content. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul is so eloquently waxed here when he says, in everything, in everywhere, I've learned to be content. You know, I was pretty upset. For a man to get an engagement ring back via FedEx is never a good feeling. You think, what's next? Years later, I was in my foreman's truck and I have never forgot the song. A country artist sang unanswered prayers. And he was crushed because his girlfriend, ex-fiance, he thought was going to be it wasn't. 
And the song's whole gist was, I thank God for unanswered prayers. And I thought, as I went home to my wife that day, thank God for unanswered prayer. You know, as I listened to that song years ago, it just hit because we pray sometimes, God, I really need this. And God doesn't answer that prayer. And we ought to thank God for those unanswered prayers. Amen. Because he knows best. Yes, the benefit of hindsight is wonderful, amen? And there's been a lot of unanswered prayers in my life. There's been a lot of heartaches in my life. My wife and I have had more than our fair share of trouble in a lot of aspects. But you know what? I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that God didn't bless me too much, that he blessed me just right. Where would I be? My kids and I were talking the other day. My family were. What if God answered my prayer and allowed my acceptance to go through in the U.S. military? I was to be shipped out to Iraq in the first battle in 1990 as a helicopter crewman. What if God allowed me to go and answer my prayer? Three years well, that was 1990. I met my wife in 1991. I would have never met her. I would have never had the three wonderful girls that I have. I could have been anywhere. Helicopter is not exactly the safest thing to fly in a dust storm. Helicopter is not the exact same safe to do because with shoulder to air rockets. Who knows? The, the possibilities could have been endless or not at all. Or I could have got deeper in my run from the Lord. I don't know where God, but I'm glad that prayer was unanswered. Because where would we be today as a community? Where would we be today as a family? God has many ways. He closed the door on being an Atlanta police officer. I could be on the street as a casualty. Don't know. God did so many doors close for me because that wasn't what he wanted for me. But that's what I prayed for. Oh, literally, I put that on the church prayer list. You know, pray that God's will be done, all this. Really, I was saying, forget God's will. Pray that it just opens up. But he closed those doors for a reason because he had a better plan for my life. I look back, just like the country song says, I look back and now I thank God for unanswered prayers. I'm looking back and thanking God that God didn't allow me to be a soldier. God didn't allow me to be a police officer. God allowed me to be a preacher because I would not trade my life. I would not trade the ministry from being a padre to being a part-time farmer to being a full-time pastor. I love who God has placed in the ministry. God has blessed me just enough. God allows, I wrote three things down when I got back to my tent around 12 o'clock on Friday night and turned on that old lantern. And, you know, we think lumens today. But that old lantern, after a while, my tent smelling like kerosene and all that. But, hey, it's, it's 1944. And I took my pencil out because you can't have any pens. There was no such things back then. So I took my pencil out and I wrote in my thing, God allows us to get what we want, but it's never what we need. God allows us to get what we want sometimes, sometimes for our blessing, sometimes for our detriment. Sometimes God allows us to get what we want sometimes. And it is what we want. The Bible says he gives the desires of our heart. Or God does not allow us to get it at all. And I put down here equal, all three, what is my reaction? How do I respond to any of those three? The heart attitude, amen? amen. That's what matters. When God answers an unanswered prayer, I was mad at God. When I got that ring in the mail, I was mad at God. 
because, wow, I met her at Bible college. I did this, I did that. I mean, she, we got along pretty good. But guess what I realized? We didn't get along good enough. Because when I found my wife, there was nothing I had to put into place. There was no puzzle piece that, it fits. <laughs> it fit. Because that was God's plan for me. Every part of my life I see I was trying to fit that puzzle piece that's almost close, but it's not close enough. This is the thing. God allows us what we get, what we want. He's done that in my life and it hasn't been good for me. He's allowed to get it sometimes. But you know what? Sometimes it's not good enough sometimes. We want more, more, more. But how's our attitude when God doesn't give us what we pray for? How do we react to God? Patchy threw a tenter tantrum. You ever see a horse throw a tender tantrum? They run around the field, they buck, they kick, they, give, they bite at the other horses. They just, they're like spoiled kids. It's kind of funny to watch them. I don't care how much exercise he's getting. He's actually losing weight by throwing a tender tantrum because I'm not budging. I'm sitting at the barn door going, go ahead, boy, run. <laughs> kick around, bite people. So you know what we did? We took all the other horses out, put them in the other pasture. Oh, that made him even matter. You know what he did? I didn't actually exercise him. He's exercised himself, so he's doing good. <laughs> With all that running and kicking and huffing and puffing around there, that's, that's good. He's burning calories. That's what he should have been doing. Because he forgets about that hay bale in the middle of the field, and he's thinking about, I need this now, and I'm going to get mad at you. One time he decided to charge at me. And I had my crop, and I was going, boink, right on the noise. He's like, whew, okay. He didn't charge him anymore. It's amazing what happens. Was he just running right at me? Yeah, I was a little nervous. <laughs> he had a tendency to stop. He's like a tractor trailer. He doesn't stop on a dime. But it's like, okay, he's going to hit me. But I put the crop up. When he got close enough, it was like, bonk, right on the head. And it's like, huh. He calmed right down. And he put his head down. Sorry, Dad. You know, now and then God has to go, doink. You don't need that. Calm down. Quit throwing a tenter tantrum. I have your best interest. And in, I'm thinking of your health. I'm thinking of your spiritual needs. I'm thinking of your physical needs. Just relax. You know what it became then? Patchy began to look forward to his treats. And he got his treats when he was deserving of it. And you know what's fun to God when he gives us the desires of our heart? Because of the Bible says here, you deserved it. Yesterday, I was watching the award ceremonies. And one guy has waited three years for his promotion. But they said he has waited patiently because of COVID things went wrong, didn't get to meet together. But they said he's been faithfully behind the scenes working to make his unit good. You know, and they said one thing we appreciate it, how his attitude is. Isn't that a blessing when people notice that we don't go, I deserve that promotion. I've been working hard and why? He said, we've had several people in the unit that are squeaky wheels. Well, their, their promotion's on hold. You know, as I was talking later, it says, yeah, they, they, they're ready, but they're not leadership quality yet. There's a key. God allows us to sit back and say sometimes, thank you, Lord, for protecting me from that thing I was convinced of having. James chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. James chapter 1. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, which whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift and every perfect gift 
is from above. If we're not blessed as much as we like, God has his reasons. God has a perfect gift for us at the perfect time. And it is for our good and our good alone. As Paul says, everywhere and in everything, he's been content. The greatest thing about Thanksgiving, and as I was praying about the message to preach, I believed without a shadow of doubt, this is it. Because we need to realize we are blessed to be a blessing. Not blessed too much to be selfish or self-centered. God has a greater purpose. God blesses us with what he knows our path should be. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I would have never guessed three years ago how God has shifted my ministry. It has been amazing to watch God shift it. <laughs> it's not my plan. My plan was here and God moved it. And I'm thankful because I'm seeing more fruition in areas where I kept doing the same thing over and over and over and over with expecting the same results. <laughs> you know, that's just a picture of insanity. You know, I'm wearing myself out doing the same thing because that's what I was taught to do and nothing was happening. But when God says here, I want you to do there. Well, I've got time. Wait a minute. What are you doing with the other time? Is the other time reaping benefits or not? But that's what I've always, I don't care what you've always done. This is what I want you to do. And we as men, we love change. Not. We don't like change. It's what I've always done and I'm not, I'm, God, you want, you're putting me with new people. I don't know these people. You know, that's what I told the Lord. I don't know these people. They're grumpy. They're old men. They're, rah, 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 they're set in their ways. They're, they're young men. They're, they're military. They're just like, you know, I, I read a quote the other day, and I can't remember how it was, but it was so funny. And um, two things military doesn't like, change and no change. And it's like, no matter which way you do to a soldier, they're, they're unhappy either way. It was like, but you know, I was laughing. I was like, God, would you? fast forward two and a half years, I'm seeing God do so much more than I've ever imagined. From the questions from the people coming to church, from everything else, the ministry. God had to say, no, nope, here. But, but Lord, but it's exactly what I needed. It's exactly, you know why? Because through this ministry and through the military, I've met my, reconnected with my cousin who challenged me to be on the journey I'm now. This is the thing. God puts people in your way for a reason. We are blessed in so many ways. If God were to grant us our every wish, where would we be today? Would we be more blessed, more thankful, or more selfish and more self-centered? After that, we have to sit down and think, am I becoming wiser and becoming more wishful? You know, many of us, well, I wish I had this. I wish I had, this. does that change anything? Or do we say, thank you, Lord, for what we have? Bless too much in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Looking at Apache, when we end up rehoming him, the owner said, we've never seen a horse more respectful and more loving. It took a lot of work, a lot of weight to get off him. But you know what? It really changed a lot of things because we set boundaries for him. And yes, horses are like kids in four legs. They need love. They need structure. They need boundaries. And guess what you get? you get a very loving, sweet, adorable horse. And this is what God wants from us. Christians that are well-fed, but not overweight, spiritually speaking. They want Christians that are a living testimony everywhere we go. 
because we're vessels under honor or dishonor. And God sometimes has to put boundaries there. And we are like Patchy sometimes. We'll go around and go do a hissy fit and kick and stomp and snort and bite and do whatever they Doesn't change the fact. But God lets us go just like I let him go. But when it came down to it, I'm his master. When it comes down to it, our Lord is our master. And he says, stop. You're making a fool of me and yourself. And we go, yes, Lord. Sometimes we have to go to the schooling of hard knocks with God. And when we're done having our hissy fit, he'll ask, have I not blessed you? Have I not given you things? Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. You are blessed. I've given your clothes. I've given your food. Given you a job. Given you a house. Given you a spouse. Given you health. Given you family, grandkids. You are blessed. What more do you really need? And sitting in that trench this week, I thought, what would I take? If I was forced from my house, what would I take? What's most important to me? What's most important to you? What's a blessing that you can't live without? It? Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are all just like children, no matter how old we are. We think we need more than we really need. Are we blessed or are we not? As a child of God, we are blessed, O oh Lord. We are richly blessed from heaven. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings to us. Lord, your Bible says that we even are blessed more than we deserve. We deserve hell. We deserve all the punishment of our sin. And yet, Lord, you have alleviated that from us as a child of God. Our iniquities deserve more judgment than we get. Your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. As our Heavenly Father, thank you for looking out for each and every one. Answering our prayers, whether it's yes Maybe, wait, or no. Thank you, Lord, for loving us that much. Dismiss with your blessing, O Lord. Give us a good afternoon. Bring us back this evening as we worship again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. May the Lord bless you. Looking forward to seeing each and every one of you at 5 o'clock tonight. Have a great afternoon and be safe on the roads.